I will call to order the City Council meeting for Monday, November 13th, 2023, and the clerk will call the roll. Councilor Pepin. Yep. Vincent? Excused. Gibson? Here. Austin? Here. Misho? Here. Witham? Here. Girding? Here. Cameron? Here. Messier? Here. Chair recognizes Councilor Witham, who will lead us in the Pledge of Allegiance. Brings us to agenda item number three, which is our recognition of indigenous people, our native ancestral Americans. This meeting is taking place on Nadi Kana, which is the unceded traditional ancestral homeland of the Abenaki, Penacook, and Wabanaki people, past and present. We acknowledge and honor with gratitude the land, waterways, living being, and the Abenaki, the people who have stewarded Nadi Kana throughout the generations. Brings us to agenda item number four, which is public hearings, which are scheduled for this evening. We'll start with ordinance number 324, supplemental appropriation for engineering and design services to replace the Hamilton Street water tank. Does anyone wish to speak in favor or against ordinance number 324, supplemental appropriations for engineering and design services to replace the Hamilton Street water tank? Please come forward, state your name, your address, and the ward you live in if you have that applicable information. Anyone wish to speak in favor or against ordinance number 324? Anyone wish to speak in favor or against ordinance number 324? None being so, I will close the public hearing on ordinance number 324 and open the public hearing on ordinance number 424 to amend chapter 19, zoning section 19.3D, historic district boundaries in section 19.14.C.3, district boundaries regarding the historic district. Anyone wish to speak in favor or against ordinance number 424? to amend chapter 19 zoning, section 19.3.D, district boundaries, and section 19.14.C.3, district boundaries regarding historic district. Please come forward, state your name, your address, and the ward you live in if you have that applicable information. Good evening and welcome. Good evening, Laura Berry, Ward 4, 211 Green Street. Um, I unfortunately was not here last time City Council met on this. I do understand that this is supposed to be moving to, forward to the Economic Development Committee. I hope that is the case. However, I am not against or I am not for this resolution um, because I do feel like a lot more research is needed to move forward with this. I do believe we will go to economic and hopefully have that solution um, come about. But I believe that um, it is too much too soon without having the proper information to move forward with this. Thank you. Thank you. Anyone else wish to speak in favor or against ordinance number 4-24? Good evening and welcome. Hello, Dave Baker, uh, developer here in town, live in Dover, 232 Spruce Land Extension. Um, worked a lot with you folks. Um, worked with the Historic District Commission. I think we've done a pretty good job together. Um, I assume, and I don't know all the details here, I assume this is about probably shrinking the footprint of the historic district, right? Well, all I can say is, is that history is very important. This culture, this town has a lot of history, but I feel very strongly, if we're gonna move forward and really maximize the value of what we have here for the community, for the economic base, for the tax, for the schools, um, I think that there has to be some give and take. Um, I understand the desire to maintain the history here, but on the other hand, expense is a big deal. As you saw with the recent deal with 85 Elm, I mean, I'm very, very thankful that that seems to be moving forward because I think that's going to be a historic for this town. I think it's going to transform the whole town in the downtown corridor, and more people will see what a wonderful community this place, in fact, is. I think this place gets a bad rap, and duly so, but you know, know those of us that are here have seen it, and I've been here since, I think, 2015. Um, it's a fantastic place, and you guys have done an incredible job. I mean, you're the most easy to work with. Now, I'm not an experienced developer, but a group of people can think we're all sort of on the same page. Very important. But cost is a big, big issue, so you know, we know 
right near 85 Elm, you know what's going to have to be developed and you know what's there now. And I would argue on either end, you may keep those, but everything else has got to go. I've been through all those buildings and they're some are ready to fall in on themselves. So I don't know how that would be viewed by the Historic Commission. I would be hopeful that if we do shrink the district or even if it's not shrunk that the historic commission just has an eye to what's needed to move forward without sacrificing history i think it looks like we reached a compromise recently which i'm very very happy about and um i gotta tell you of all the towns around you this is a place to be it really is how it's laid out the people the culture I mean, it's fantastic, and I think that's been lost by some of the communities around us. So I think if we can collectively move forward, stay on the same page, and whether we shrink or don't shrink the historic commission, the district, I just think it's really important for people to try to take into account their desire to maintain the history but also move forward economically. So I'm very, very hopeful we're going to do it. I think we've done it to date, and I just hope it doesn't stop because I think things are really finally just getting started. And I think that'll be better for all of us in the community and the schools. So that's just my two cents. Very happy to be here. Very happy I decided to invest here. And very happy to work with you all. So thank you. Thank you. Anyone else wish to speak in favor or against ordinance number 424? Good evening and welcome. My name is Betty Thompson. I live on 11 Forest Street. I've just come back to town after being gone for quite some time. This might not be appropriate, but I am not aware of what it is we're coming up to discuss and so is there something that I can do before I come to the next meeting to actually know what these mean um, so that I can be a better informed <laughs> constituent um, or do you ever talk about it like do you tell us those of us that don't know like what that means so because we can't have discussion during this time period, yeah but we're, we're happy to provide you with the the ordinance uh, after this meeting okay. if you reach out to the city manager's office tomorrow morning okay we'll and or that's how you yep. do it okay Absolutely. perfect you can reach out to any one of your counselors good evening and welcome hello there uh, ed lavasser i live on 18 green street i've lived in the historic district commission for uh, about seven years now except for a year when i lived just outside of it um, i was on the historic district commission for a few years and during that time, we went through the whole process of reviewing the ordinances, reviewing the boundaries. I think that this effort is reactionary to one, one developer, one large developer. And when I think of other development projects that have gone on in my time in the city, specifically the Hilltop School, it seemed like that went off pretty well. We had a design proposal for what might soon be a parking lot at that same site uh, where 85 Elm Street is. And you know, that went off pretty well. Um, when I think of a uh, development that has hit a roadblock, <clears throat> you know, I just have to look right out these windows. And when I look at the historic district boundaries, the plaza is not within those boundaries. Uh, so it begs the question, what's stopping development here? Uh, we go all over the seacoast, we go to Rochester, we go to Dover, even South Berwick, there's been infill developments. It seems to be that we're the common ones out that struggle to get these developments. And again, I don't think that it's the Historic District, District Commission that is, that is halting this. So before we go the way of urban renewal and getting rid of the fabric of our community, I, I urge you to take a serious look at this, to hear the voices of the people that live within the district. I know oftentimes when there's land use projects sure they send notices to the the abutters but that doesn't quite often reach the renters as we know this is a, a bedroom community i think that we can do better you know that's kind of a caveat in reaching the renters that live within the abutters properties to get more engagement specifically on something such as big as this thank you for your time thank you anyone else wish to speak in favor or against ordinance number 424 Anyone else wish to speak in favor or against ordinance number 424? None being so, I'll close the public hearing on ordinance number 424. Brings us to agenda item number five, which is comments by visitors. The Summersworth City Council and Mayor's Office welcome all visitors and encourage you to voice your opinion and views at the City Council meetings. In accordance with Council Rule 7C, a time limit of five minutes per person shall be in effect unless the Council wishes to suspend the rules. The Speaker shall not enter into any debate with any person, the Mayor, 
council members, city manager, or department heads. At this time, we welcome comments by visitors. Please come forward, state your name, your address, and the ward you live in if you have that applicable information. Any comments by visitors this evening? <laughs> we'll wait for you, George. <laughs> Good evening and welcome. Good evening, Your Honor, City Council. Uh, George Poon, 12 Grove Street, Ward 1. Uh, I am a member of the Historic District Commission. However, I'm not here for that, so please understand that I'm here for the Historical Society, which has nothing to do with the HDC, okay? Um, anyway, I'm here tonight to kind of give you a heads up of an upcoming display uh, that I hope you think we all will be interested in. The museum is going to be having a temporary display on loan from the Tom Hallworth collection uh, of theater posters. Tom is a uh, native of Dover and has a collection of approximately 80 posters from the early 1900s. His grandfather, great-grandfather, was a, a barber in Dover, and they found these unbelievable posters. You have to see them to believe them. Um, the collection includes posters from <coughs> theaters, bands, boxing, Central Park, Dover, Rochester, Summersworth, and a few other surrounding towns, and it's just full of local history. Uh, we are currently planning to have them on display December 6th, 13th, and 20th, which is a Wednesday from 5 to 8, with our regular Sunday meetings, uh, Sunday day hours, also from 12.30 to 3.30. We'll be closed on Christmas and New Year's, and we will have the display approximately four weeks in January after that on Sundays. So this is the collection that you don't want to miss. And we hope you, you'll stop in and have a look at uh, the past history here, local history. And on December 6th, we're going to be having in kind of an open house at 5 o'clock with refreshments to welcome Tom and his collection. And we just hope that you can join us. So we just want to say we're really proud to have Tom uh, in this display uh, come to our museum. So I, I encourage you, you, you're going to love it. So thank you. Thank you, George, and thank you all members. Uh, thank you and all members of the society for continuing to uh, preserve and protect Summersworth's history. Any further comments by visitors this evening? Any further comments by visitors? Any further comments by visitors? That being so, that brings us to agenda item number six. Chair will obtain a motion in regards to the consent calendar. Cons Councillor Austin. I'll move to adopt the consent calendar. Councillor Austin moves that the consent calendar be adopted as presented, seconded by Councillor Pepin. Question before the council is on the adoption of the consent calendar. All those in favor, please state by saying aye. 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 All those opposed, no. The ayes appear to have it. The ayes have it. The consent calendar is adopted. Brings us to agenda item number seven, which is comments by councillors. Any comments by councillors this evening? Councillor Witham. Thank you. Uh, appreciate the comments offered by some members of the public regarding the uh, ordinance uh, proposal, zoning ordinance proposal to reduce the size of the historic district. Um, I am the sponsor of that particular piece of uh, legislation. Uh, it's my understanding that that piece of legislation remains in committee, so it's unlikely that we'll act on that tonight. So I just want to try to get that out to anybody that might be here for that this evening. Um, I think Councillor Austin's committee is tasked with looking at that. So perhaps when we have a report out of committees, he can give us an update on that. Um, I will say, though, that uh, to date, uh, this proposed piece of legislation has done exactly what I hoped it would do, and that is to generate a, a conversation around the topic. Uh, I'm thinking back over my tenure as a city councillor and uh, the issues that we've dealt with uh, legislation that we've proposed, passed, or uh, defeated, uh, city budgets and whatnot. And uh, perhaps uh, several years ago when we amended our contract and provider for ambulance coverage here in the city, uh, that generated a fair amount of conversation. Uh, Councillor Pepin is laughing. I'm trying to be very nice about that. Uh, conversation wasn't necessarily what it was. Uh, but this issue has generated lots of conversation around the community, which is exactly what it was intended to do, to solicit feedback, to say, is what we're proposing uh, in order? Does it make sense? Uh, should we not do this? Or does the final disposition lie somewhere in the middle? Uh, and quite frankly, as I uh, 
I'm out and about in the community, I've heard people that have spoken like tonight, uh, caution, uh, leave it the way it is, uh, maybe even some that suggest making it bigger. Uh, some people that love the idea and would even suggest getting rid of it in its entirety. And then there are those people that lie somewhere in the middle with, uh, could you pick a property here or there? Could you kind of like spot zone it? Which I don't think we can do, but it's an interesting thought. So uh, the, the community is uh, at least, and again, this is just a thumbnail sketch of, you know, maybe a dozen or more folks that I've chatted with about this, that uh, the community is divided on this issue. So uh, when you have a community that is divided on an issue, it's an important issue for this body uh, and hopefully involving uh, the Historic District Commission uh, to have that conversation around. Because when there's that much divide, it means that it's broke and it's not working well. So we need to fix it. And what that fix is, is my proposal is to at least shrink it. Maybe that's not the ultimate disposition of this council, uh, but that's at least a proposal that's in front of us. So I'm at least excited about the conversation that's been started. Uh, heck, I've had a walking tour as a result of this. Uh, on campaign night last week, it was the conversation uh, standing with a sign in front of the polling places. Uh, so the conversation has been robust, and I appreciate that. Thank you. Any further comments by councillors? Any further comments by councillors? That being so, they'll bring us on to agenda item number seven, which, sorry, agenda item number eight, which is communications. We have no communications this evening. Agenda item number nine, which is presentations of petitions. We have no petitions to bring forward this evening. Brings us to agenda item number 10, which is the mayor's report. Honorable members of the council, I submit to you the mayor's report for Monday, November 13th, 2023. General Douglas MacArthur once stated, a true leader has the confidence to stand alone, the courage, to make tough decisions, and the compassion to listen to the needs of others. He does not set out to be a leader, but becomes one by the quality of his actions and the integrity of his intent. In the end, leaders are much like eagles. They don't flock. You will find them one at a time. Leadership is developed. It is studied, acquired, and learned through the observation of life experiences of failures and successes. True leadership is a willingness to sacrifice, a sacrifice of the gift of time and the willingness to navigate through the turbulent waters of negative discourse, manipulation of truth, and personal attacks. Yet those that lead stride through. They stride through to ensure the success of community moves forward. The leader has a keen understanding that there is something bigger than self and does not abandon their morals, ethics, or commitment towards the direction. The passion for community and creating systems that will continue to evolve our democratic principles is what must be at the base of those that lead. Ensuring possibilities exist for the achievement and economic advancement of all citizens must be the foundational pillar of those who were given our consent to govern. One simply does not lead with ethics or integrity because they claim to nor are those words bestowed upon one seeking to lead because they have embedded them within their personal psyche or campaign slogans. Instead, it comes natural to those who are willing to serve from the pure heart and continue doing so even when attacked or demonized. Over the course of our human history, names have been inscribed within the hall of global leadership. Leaders who have led by heart and soul despite the barrage of hateful discourse or violence they encountered. Christ, Gandhi, Martin Luther King, all have joined the ranks of those who have followed and adamantly opposed. Yet they stayed the course pure of heart in the intentions they led, all bringing society and the world to a better place, all why attacked, and all losing their lives on the journey to human betterment. The status quo is not something which is acceptable for the leader. Some free advice was once bestowed upon me by a close friend and mentor. The advice spoke truth about the complexity of modern leadership. Quote, the universe can be divided into two types of energy, dense and vibrant. The leader leads doors towards the vibrant, while giving little time and argue and engage those who wish to occupy the dense. For the leader knows if you fight and argue against those who wish to remain in the dense, you lose and have moved yourself into the space they wish to remain in. Instead, one stays the course, leads towards the vibrant, 
and sidesteps attacks and uses opportunities to advance vision and wisdom. It is the wisdom that is an innovation to vibrancy and the best tool to diffuse. It is the wisdom and knowledge and vision of a true leader that can guide a community away from the ill nature of the big fishes who consistently live for the world of the detriments in the small pond." End quote. Leadership is not easy. It is tiring, wearing on the soul, and a very empty, lonely place. It is a place that many claim to occupy, but the harsh reality is few will ever rise to represent the meaning of the word. Having gained consent or winning an election does not make you a leader. Engaging in posting tweets or acting like one has strength from the safety of their computer does also not give one right to the word leadership. Leadership is not making statements to others that, quote, this is about a revolution, or discrediting those attempting to ensure the waters of stagnation do not suffocate the pulse of progression. No, leadership is not about self. Leadership is not about self. Leadership is about others. Leadership is an understanding that others have joys and experience pain, that others live in the world of happiness and loneliness, that some will reach incredible successes while others will live in a world of struggle. It is about striking a balance between those that have and have nots, between those with faith and those who do not believe and those seeking for answers. It's ensuring, ensuring the rights we were promised are delivered upon, delivered to everyone. And it is about commitment. Commitment to the struggles and pain of growing democracy into the system that can truly deliver hope to the human spirit. Leadership is not about self, it is about others. It is with this matrix that those who are attempted or are attempting to lead will be judged upon the passage of history. Congratulations to all who were elected or re-elected during the past municipal election. I, along with all of the citizens of our great community, look forward to each of you living up to the expectation in the word leadership and what that is all about. Best wishes as you begin your service to the Hilltop community within your elected position in January. This past Saturday, I had the honor of delivering the city's official Veterans Day event, a Veterans Day address, at the American Legion. For 247 years, the great American experiment has endured the threats of foreign and domestic adversaries. On Saturday, we thank, we thank those brave men and women who without hesitation were willing to defend the light of liberty for all future generations. Like our existence, democracy and the rights we cherish are fragile. They must be nourished, taken care of, and given the time to mature. When we neglect our bodies, they fail. We neglect our soul, it yawns for the connection that guides it. When we neglect democracy, it withers and dies. Its death leaves a barren wasteland of authoritarian rule and the repression of human rights. Yes, like our body, our daily existence, and democracy's daily existence, is fragile. Its blood, its breath, its heartbeat, all depends upon us. Each day we continue our routines. We rise, go to the gym, drink coffee, become frustrated with our commute, and become entangled with our daily affairs. We stand in lines, we wait, we text, we call, we engage in conversation, and in rare moments, we halt. Given the chance to reflect upon how blessed we are and the debt we owe to those who secured our blessings, the rows of graves standing in their final formation, decorated with the flag of our nation, announcing to the wind as it captures its fabric that we shall continue the journey. A veteran's license plate on a congested highway or a lonely state route, reminding us that it is our brethren who carried that burden. The burden of defending, the burden of witnessing, the burden of bearing the scars, the burden of securing the path for the journey to continue upon. So we continue. We continue our march, our march towards our greatness, our march towards our equality, our march towards ensuring that this experiment will not fail. Defended, 
defended by those who don and have donned the uniform of our republic. We march, march towards embracing those values, which sometimes seemed almost out of reach for the 247 years of our existence. So we continue. With each day, with each moment, with each year, honoring. Honoring those who are willing to sacrifice by adhering to what we strive to become. A nation. A nation where freedom and liberty for all, for all, will be secured. For all religions, for all genders, for all ethnicities and sexual orientations. For all who desire, desire to contribute, desire to construct, desire to move forward, and desire to defend. Tonight we take time to pause, to reflect, to remember, and to honor. Honor all of those in the world of the living and the spirit form who have defended a nation built upon the promise that all should be seated at the banquet of liberty. Today and this evening, we reaffirm our commitment to the safeguards and the pillars of which this nation was cast upon, to honor all differences and to seek common ground to advance the creed which identifies us. It has been a great honor to serve as your mayor over the last decade. As a supporter of term limits, I did not seek re-election. And soon the greatness of our democracy and our democratic system will be witnessed as Matt Girding becomes your next visionary, your next leader, and your next mayor. It has been my humble, humble pleasure over these last 10 years to echo the words which promote our great republic and honor men and women who have defended it and who have made the ultimate sacrifice. Let us continue, each of us, of remembering that burden that they carried to protect this nation and to carry it forward. We have been guided by the willing sacrifices of the men and women who carry the title veterans. Will you, will we, live up to our promise, the promise of safeguarding liberty for all? May God forever offer his grace and guidance for all of us to hold true to the principles of our great nation. May he continue to shield in his protection those who have willingly defended our nation and those who have sacrificed their lives in the name of democracy. And may God forever bless each and every person who has carried the title and carries the title of a United States veteran. Democracy works. From this evening through the end of December, Mayor-elect Girding and I will be working on the transitional process. Unlike the, unlike the dysfunction we have witnessed, there will be no insurrection or storming of City Hall during that time period. Instead, the power of how and what lies within our... Oh, welcome, Councillor Vincent. Nice of you to arrive. Instead, the power of <laughs> that lies within our democratic system <laughs> will peacefully transfer from one executive to the next and from one member of this council and legislature to the next, and witnessed by all of how great our democratic system is at the next inauguration in January. I look forward to working with Matt over the months to come, leading up to his swearing in, and once again modeling how Summersworth will continue to lead in our model of how we practice democracy within our 10 square miles we call home. <clears throat> Under nomination appointments and elections, under nomination appointments and elections, there are none being brought forward this evening, and I will plan on bringing none forward to the conclusion of my term on January 1st. Any further nominations will be brought forward by your new mayor, Mr. Girding. And that successfully concludes my mayor's report for November 13th, 2023. Brings us to agenda item number 11, which is reports of standing committees, and we'll start with the chair of the finance committee, Councilor Girding. I Sorry, Council Witham. <laughs> <laughs> it's going to be the mayor. He's not going to chair the committee, too. But no, no report this evening. Thank you. <laughs> thank you, Councilor. Brings us on to the chair of the Government Operations Committee, Councilor Mishu. Uh, thank you, Your Honor. Uh, Government Ops Committee met on October 31st, 2023, at 5 p.m. here in City Hall. First of the meeting was uh, the proof of the minutes of the previous meeting that was held on June 14, 2023. Council Cameron made the motion to approve the minutes, and it was seconded by Council Girding, and it passed for nothing. Second on the agenda was personal rules and regulations, uh, City Ordinance Chapter 4, 
city manager presented a memorandum that included amendments to chapter four personnel rules and regulations. The first amendment provided, provides clarification that department heads shall approve overtime for their staff in advance unless the overtime is required due to an emergency. Also, additionally, Mr. Belmore asked the committee to consider establishing a 60-hour cap regarding to the maximum balance allowed pertaining to uh, comp time, which is aligns with other union contracts, meaning you cannot carry more than 60 hours to the pre next following year. After a brief discussion, uh, Council Anson made a motion to support the ordinance change of Chapter 4, Personal Rules and Regulations, seven, Section 7.3, Overtime. The motion was seconded by Councilor Cameron and it passed 4-0. Uh, uh, next is uh, the city manager asked the committee to consider an amendment on chapter four, section 6.4, transfer between departments. He stated that this amendment is to provide clarification that employees who wish to transfer to another department who may possess an appropriate qualification will be afforded the opportunity to apply to the uh, considered for that next position. So it's just going to say if you want, an, if you have a position in one department and you want to go to the next department, you must apply for it and get approved or accepted and just make it a lot easier. And it doesn't look like anything shady that is just sliding somebody one department to the next. And that's going to be coming up for the first read this evening under Ordinance 5-24. Next was the uh, recovery friendly workplace. Uh, city manager, Mr. Belmore updated the committee with the city's commitment to participate in recovery friendly workplace initiative program. He provided a copy of the email by um, Amy Doyle confirming that she had reached out to Governor Sununu's office and is now waiting to receive the official certificate on behalf of the governor's office. Once the certificate has been received, Ms. Doyle will be in touch with uh, the city and um, schedule a quick photo op with the city of Summersworth. Next on the agenda was uh, the city manager provide the committee with staffing updates and including breakdowns by each department within the city. He noted that any vacancies that are coming up, also retirements. Council Austin inquired about deputy fire chief's position. Mr. Belmore stated that the staff are in process of finalizing the job description and then will post the opening in the near future. Uh, Council Cameron made a motion to adjourn. The motion was seconded by Council Austin and it passed a 4 0. The meeting adjourned at 5 21 p.m. Thank you. Thank you, Councillor. Brings us to the Economic Development Committee, Chair Councillor Austin. Thank you, Your Honor. The committee has not met, but we are planning and scheduling a meeting on November 29th. That'd be a Wednesday afternoon at five o'clock, assuming we can get buy-in from all of the members to attend. I plan for that to be a joint meeting with the Historic District Commission uh, to discuss the uh, resolution that's been presented to us. Thank, thank you, you. Councillor. Brings us to Public Safety Chair, Councillor Pepin. Yes, thank you, Mayor. I don't have a report, but I do. A um, couple of council meetings ago, we had some uh, comments made about public safety in our schools. Uh, I spoke to the city manager about it. He agrees with me that uh, we're planning on doing a full inspection of the building to see if there's any problems or whatever and if they are we'd like to try to get them corrected as soon as possible if they are so that will be on our next safety meeting well whenever we do have it so thank you counselor brings us to public works and environment chair counselor with them no official report other than director Babinski's crew had to plow last week so a little early might slow down <laughs> thank you counselor Brings us to Recreation Chair, Councilor Cameron. Yes, thank you, Yolanda. I do have a report tonight. Uh, we met on October 25th, and we approved the past meetings of July 10th. And then we went right into some miscellaneous updates from Recreation Supervisor Davenport. And she said that the fall program updating updates, geez, stated that the Pee Wee Soccer had 35 children registered and that has now concluded on the 28th of October. She reported that the Tiny Toppers fall session had 14 children and adult caregivers. The new Hilltopper 50 plus walking and hiking program was a success. There were 17 adults registered and their last walk of the season was going to be on uh, the 26th and they were gonna walk downtown. 
They plan on adding a spring and fall session moving forward where it was so successful. Um, she also mentioned that this will have gone by as well, that residents were asked to stop by the office to make a card or write a letter to veterans to show their appreciation that the VFW was going to pick them up and distribute to the veterans. The basketball program is in need of coaches, so if you know of anybody that would like to be involved, please reach out to her. There were a few events that have come and gone, and there'll be some uh, new ones. Um, there's going to be a street hockey clinic with the Summersworth Lions Club. The Halloween pet contest has come and gone. The Halloween hoopla at the library. But there will be the flashlight candy cane hunt. And there's going to be a new Hilltoppers 50 plus holiday create and take that will be taking place. And she also wanted to give a shout out to the new recreation clerk that's doing a great job. So after we did that meeting, we all took a walk over to the Ash Street Park Butterfly Park to check in on what has been done by Home Depot and our own Public Works. They've done an amazing job transforming that so far already. Um, and more work will be done in the spring with planting and signage and different things to come. But as of right now, the park is done or where it's going to be for this year. But everybody's done a great job with that, and I look forward to the continued progress with that. Um, let's see. And that concluded my report, and we ended at 411 that day. Thank, Thank you, you, Counselor. Brings us to agenda item number 12, which is reports of special committees. Any reports of special committees? Counselor Pepin and then Girding. Counselor Pepin. Yes, thank you, Mayor. I had a 911 meeting this afternoon at 1 o'clock at the police department. Uh, the only one thing on the agenda was the post storm address. Um, the reason why we had to have the meeting is that, uh, as the state requires, that the addresses be every 50 feet as far as changing the numbers. Um, Right now, we had to address a six Willand Drive uh, under the 50 foot specs that the state wants us to go by. That number should be 30, and that's what they're suggesting that we put it. But 30 is the warming center right now, so it kind of like put us in a little bit of a dilemma. So, um, basically, <coughs> temporarily, we're going to let the address be as six so they can get their permits and do whatever they need to do, their driveways or whatever, with them telling them that we are expecting to change their address, hopefully in the very near future. And we'll be working with the rest of the residents to see if we can renumber the, the street to meet the uh, space, state specifications. And we adjourned, uh, I don't have a time on it, but it was probably about a half an hour, it's very short. Thank you, Councilor. Further reports of special committees, Councilor Girding and then Cameron, Councilor Girding. Thank you, Your Honor. Um, the Community Power Committee uh, met on Thursday, November 9th at 4.30 here in Council Chambers. I don't yet have minutes, so I'm just going to do my very best to summarize what we went over. Um, we started by approving uh, the meeting minutes from the meeting before. We then uh, went into discussing the uh, Community Power Electric Aggregation Plan that will need to be put together prior to submitting the plan to Council for Council approval. Um, we had received a template plan from the Community Power Coalition of New Hampshire to go through and uh, look at. Um, large majority of the template uh, was kind of just plug and play, uh, like language where it would be like a date change or like add somebody's name here to you know the representative of the Community Power Coalition. But the big section that we were kind of tasked with working on were both the policy goals and the um, objectives for uh, the the community. Um, so we spent a lot of time discussing those two items. Uh, we looked at goals that were contained within the Summersworth Master Plan from uh, 2010. We looked at uh, policy goals that the state of New Hampshire puts out through the New Hampshire Department of Energy uh, related to energy policy. Uh, and we came up with um, some suggestions that we uh, hope will be uh, finalized for our next meeting where we will then approve uh, and then submit those forward to City Council. Um, for the policy goal, I think I have that at least that I can hopefully uh, share with you all, which was we were going to prioritize cost-effective, uh, secure, reliable, resilient, and sustainable energy systems for uh, Summersworth residents, businesses, and local government. I hope I didn't miss something. 
governments, yes, for all the various parts of the local government. Um, and then for the uh, objectives, uh, we there's a number of these that I don't have all off the top of my head because I don't have the minutes, um, but I'm hoping uh, by our next meeting I'll be able to share those out in more detail. Um, but those were all worked through and uh, we kind of came to agreement on a bunch of those. Um, after that, uh, we set our next meeting date, which I also don't have in front of me. I apologize. I'll get that out soon. Um, November 21st at 4 p.m. Thank you very much. Um, and then we adjourned. Thank you, Councilor. Further reports of special committees. Councilor Cameron. Thank you. Uh, I just wanted to let remind everybody, I'll let everybody know the Summersworth Berwick Christmas Parade will be December 2nd at 1.30. And we do have a rain date of Sunday, the 3rd, at 11. And this year's theme is called Classic Cartoon Christmas. So it should be very exciting. We have a lot of neat things planned. So we hope to see you there. Thank you. Thank you, Councilor. Further reports of special committees. Any further reports of special committees? None being so, City Manager. Thank you, Your Honor. I offer the following comments that were in my written report to council on agenda items this evening as well as a couple of informational items uh, jumping over to new business ordinance 524 in regards to amending personnel rules and regulations the city ordinance chapter 4 I did, did want to point out hopefully you had a chance to look at the red line copy of the ordinances sections that are being amended and I recommend a public hearing be scheduled for the next regular council meeting December 11th your honor without objection we will schedule that public hearing without objection under new resolutions, resolution 2124, authorizing the city manager to convey an easement over city-owned property abutting 46 Pinewood Drive to the residents there um, who are trustees of a revocable trust. Public Works and Environment Committee did review this request. It's a long-standing request um, that uh, um, somehow got lost in the shuffle. In any event, um, I did provide a wealth of information in regards to their actual requests, some maps, and other background information in regards to um, how we view this particular easement. City Attorney has approved some language for the easement, so that's been done also. Resolution 2224 regarding the manager's authority to contract with Richardson Electric Company of Seabrook, New Hampshire, for the replacement of two. Um, wa uh, raw water pump VFDs at the water treatment facility. Variable frequency drives there. I did provide in information that was provided to me from City Engineer Amber Hall with the two bid results we received, this being the lower bid. Um, the council did approve in the budget $100,000 for this project. It's in the Water Enterprise Fund, so it doesn't affect the general fund. I also um, with recommend that we include a contingency funding up to the approved budget amount as indicated in the resolution, so it was, it was a little less. Than, it was less than a hundred thousand, but uh, we'd like to put some contingencies. So inevitably, many of our projects end up having some snafu to it that we need a little bit more money to complete the project. I'll jump down to a few other things. Uh, under other, we have B vote to waive an excav excavation moratorium and paving moratorium for the repair of a residence sewer line at 19 Drew Road. I provided you information regard, regarding this request and also a memorandum on the timeline uh, in regards to the paving moratorium. And of course, our winter excavation moratorium is from November 15th to April 15th that you'd be waiving. And this holds true for the next two uh, items under other vote to waive the moratorium for UNITIL and also um, to waive the excavation moratorium um, in regards to. Um, the Turcot pit off Maple Street, and it does include a little bit of the Axex Road on Ma uh, leading in from Maple Street into the Turcot pit. On info items, very quickly, the police uh, bulletproof vest grant program. Uh, uh, kudos to the chief and his staff. They've been going after these grants for many years now. Uh, the chief did receive information that we had been awarded grant funding to pur purchase two, six new vests. And so without objection, staff will move forward to accept these grant funds and we'll find the uh, required city match. The total cost for the six vests is almost $7,600, so our match will be almost $3,800 and the grant is for the same amount. 
the Willian Road Warming Center. Uh, if you read the Fosters today, there was a large article in regards to that uh, moving forward with the opening of that. Um, all three mayors, all three city managers, and county commissioner chairman met to go over the two proposals that we received. And uh, I'm moving forward with this one. The county is in the process of finalizing an agreement with Carly's home team and some partners to, to this home team to operate the emergency warming center along the same parameters as last year. So there's no change in the operational scheme or the operational parameters that uh, worked quite well last year. Based on past city council votes, I will be signing an agreement with the county as will the Dover and Rochester managers on behalf of their communities uh, as we move forward and pending the uh, finalization of this agreement. And it looks like it's been agreed upon because there was pictures of them inside the facility and whatnot, but I haven't received formal uh, documentation to sign. That concludes my brief comments, Your Honor. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Manager. Brings us to agenda item number 13, which is nomina nomination appointments and elections. Again, uh, no further nominations will be brought forward until the new mayor and council are seated. Brings us to agenda item number 14, which is items which have been laid upon the table. We have no items which are laid upon the table. Your Honor, may I interrupt? I guess I just did. Sorry. You did. Uh, <laughs> so I guess you may. <laughs> uh, I'd like to uh, know of your opinion to move to other B, C, and D now out of order with the agenda as we have guests here for those three items and not sure they need to wait through. Without objection from council, we will move to other B, C, and D. Without objection. Under other B, a vote to waive the excavation moratorium paving moratorium for the repair of a resident sewer line at 19 Drew Road. The vote will be uh, authorizing to waive the moratorium. That is uh, City Ordinance Chapter 12. Discussion. Council Witham. Yeah, if I could, I, I'd like to waive council rules to ask Director Babinski a question about paving this time of year. Council with the moves that city council rules be so far as suspended as to allow the director to come forward, seconded by Councillor Pepin. The question over the council is on suspension of council rules. All those in favor, please state by saying aye. 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 All those opposed, no. The ayes appear to have it. The ayes have it, and city council rules are so far as suspended. Good evening and welcome. Good evening, Mayor, Council. Director, thank you. Uh, so, having served on the Public Works and Environment Committee here in the city for a number of years now, and at the request of other councilors, probably championed by Councillor Pepin, we've modified our paving strategy here in the city um, significantly so that we do most of our paving work during uh, the spring, summer months, if needed, the early fall. Uh, our old paving pattern used to have us paving this time of year, right. and we found that our results were less than satisfactory because you can have certain temperatures of the ground and of the pavement. And, temperatures are not always consistent. Um, how are we to be assured that the quality of the paving work that on this repair after it's done will be to our satisfaction? Do we maintain a bond? Uh, so if in the spring it doesn't look good, it would be redone. I mean, how do we address that? Yeah, thank you, Councillor. Uh, there are a, a couple of key um, conditions that we put on the contractor or anybody that would be seeking a waiver and uh, in particularly in the winter moratorium number one the contractor will um, be required to post a 30-month bond a financial guarantee basically so uh, that will provide us with some backing in the event there's some failure or depression or heaving over the neck over that period of time um, in addition we will be um, requiring a certain type of trench operation uh, to ensure, in this case, because Drew Road is a moratorium, a pavement moratorium, so they will be required to go uh, 20 feet on either side of the trench. It's either 15 or 20 feet to create more of a bond so that it's less likely that we will see failure. Um, we're monitoring with this particular situation the availability of uh, hot mix and so forth, uh, so that's another factor as well. But so there are some conditions of approval, insurances as well. They have to, uh, they uh, provide a certificate of insurance naming the city as well. And that would hold true for any of the other paving work or the unitil work that's planned that's as correct. well. So this question pertains to both. It does. <laughs> right. Thank you. Question for the council is a vote to waive the excavation moratorium, paving moratorium for repair of the resident sewer line at 19 Davis Road. Further, further discussion or questions to the director? 
for any further discussion or questions. None being so, all those in favor of waiving the excavation and moratorium and paving moratorium, please state by saying aye. 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 All those opposed, no. The ayes appear to have it, the ayes have it, and it is waived. Under other C, vote to waive the excavation moratorium for Unitel to perform gas main installation work on Maple Street. Council with them. Thank you. Uh, again, the same comments would hold true here that we just hold them accountable for the quality of the work. I think even more magnified here as it's uh, involving uh, a good chunk of sidewalk uh, and a much busier street, uh, quite frankly, that goes in front of the fire station, so it's an active area. Uh, I would only note this is an observation, and I've asked city staff to look at it as well. Uh, the, the work that was recently completed on Black Water Road is less than desirable, so uh, they're going to need to come back and repair a lot of that hot top work. It does not meet a non-engineering look. It's got difficult edges, there's depressions, uh, so that work will need to be redone. So I'm cautiously optimistic that it can be done better on Maple Street, but time will tell. The question for the council is a vote to waive the moratorium. Further discussion? <coughs> None being so, all those in favor, please state by saying aye. 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 All those opposed, no. The ayes appear to have it, the ayes have it, and the moratorium is waived. Other under D, vote to waive the excavation moratorium for consolidated communications to perform work on city property known as Turcotte Pit off Maple Street. The vote will be to waive the moratorium. Discussion? Council with them. Thank you. Uh, my only concern here is with the contractor, Consolidated Communications. They are responsible for the bazillion double utility pole issues that we have around the community. They are responsible for drilling into our sidewalks and streets without permission to put in extra utility poles. This is not a good contractor. It is not a good vendor. I wish they didn't have a place in our city, but they do. Uh, I think this work is related to the substation uh, work, uh, so it's important, uh, but Consolidated Communications is not a good partner. Thank you. Question for the council is the vote to waive the moratorium. Further discussion? None being so, all those in favor, please state by saying aye. Aye. All those opposed, no? No. no. The ayes appear to have it, the ayes have it, and the, and the moratorium is waived. That will bring us back to agenda items under agenda item number 15, which is unfinished business. Chair recognizes the clerk for a second reading on ordinance number 324. Ordinance number 324, supplemental appropriation for engineering and design services to replace the Hamilton Street water tank. Ordinance number 324 having been ready first and second time is open to further amendment. No amendment being offered, the chair will obtain a motion on ordinance number 324. Council with them. Move for its adoption. Council with them moves the adoption of ordinance number 324, seconded by Councillor Austin. Discussion? None being so, if you are in favor of the adoption of ordinance number 324, you will state by saying yes. If you are opposed, you will state by saying no. The chair recognizes the clerk to call the roll. Councillor Pepin. Yes. Vincent? Yes. Gibson? Yes. Austin? Yes. Michaud? Yes. Witham? Yes. Girding? Yes. Cameron? Yes. Messier. Ordinance number 324 is adopted. Chair recognizes the clerk for a second reading on ordinance number 424. Ordinance number 424, to amend chapter 19, zoning section 19.3.D, district. Sorry, it's still in committee. Pop that. Point of order, Your Honor, is it still not have its second reading and it remains in committee? Uh, they have not reported it out. So, I mean, the second reading, it has not been, it has not been reported. It was assigned under first reading. So therefore a second reading would not take place because a second reading would require action by this council. So it is not possession of this council under first reading. It is possession of this body unless assigned, and the chair is allowed to assign. So under parliamentary procedure, I did assign it to the Economic Development Committee. It cannot be reported out under second reading because it is not possession of this body yet, and second <coughs> reading can only take place when it is reported out and back to possession of this body. Is the parliamentary situation clear? Can I ask a clarifying question? Absolutely. Re related. It, so it would remain as an unfinished it business. It is remain item. as an unfinished business until reported out by the committee. All the useless information in my head at times, right? <laughs> brings us, brings us, 
to unfinished business under resolutions. Chair recognizing the clerk for a second reading on resolution 1524. I guess not useless information, but. Resolution number 1524, to authorize the city manager to execute a 20-year lease extension agreement with Hideout Golf LLC for the operation and maintenance of an 18-hole golf course on city-owned property. Resolution 1524, amendment ready first and second time is open to further amendment. No amendment be it offered, the chair will obtain a motion of resolution 1524. Councilor Austin. I'd like to move for its adoption. Councilor Austin moves the adoption of resolution 1524, seconded by Councilor Vincent. Discussion. None being so, if you are in favor of the adoption of resolution 1524, you'll state by saying yes. If you're opposed, you'll state by saying no. Chair recognizes the clerk call the roll. Councilor Pepin. Yes. Vincent? Yes. Gibson? Abstain. Austin? Yes. Misho? Yes. Witham? Yes. Girding? Yes. Cameron? Yes. Messier? Yes. Resolution 1524 is adopted. Chair recognizes the clerk for a second reading on resolution 1624. Resolution number 1624, <coughs> to authorize the city manager to contract with Wright Pierce Engineering of Portsmouth, New Hampshire for engineering services at the Summersworth Wastewater Treatment Facility. Resolution 1624 have been ready first and second time is open to further amendment. No amendment be it offered, the chair will obtain a motion on resolution 1624. Councilor Witham. Move for its adoption. Councilor Witham moves the adoption of resolution 1624, seconded by Councilor Cameron. Discussion. None being so, if you are in favor of the adoption of Resolution 1624, you will state by saying yes. If you are opposed, you will state by saying no. Chair recognizes the clerk to call the roll. Councillor Pepin. Yes. Vincent. Yes. Gibson. Yes. Austin. Yes. Misho. Yes. Witham. Yes. Girding. Yes. Cameron. Yes. Messier. Yes. Resolution 1624 is adopted. Chair recognizes the clerk for a second reading on Resolution 1724. Resolution number 1724, to authorize the city manager to contract with Wright Pierce Engineering of Portsmouth, New Hampshire for engineering services to replace the Hamilton Street water tank. Resolution 1724 has been ready first and second time is open to further amendment. No amendment be it offered, the chair will obtain a motion on resolution 1724. Councillor Pepin. Move for its adoption. Councillor Pepin moves the adoption of resolution 1724, seconded by Councillor Gibson. Discussion. None being so, if you are in favor of the adoption of Resolution 1724, you will state by saying yes. If you are opposed, you will state by saying no. Chair recognizes the clerk to call the roll. Councillor Pepin. Yes. Vincent. Yes. Gibson. Yes. Austin. Yes. Misho. Yes. Witham. Yes. Girding. Yes. Cameron. Yes. Messier. Yes. Resolution 1724 is adopted. Chair recognizes the clerk for a second reading on Resolution 2024. Resolution number 2024. To authorize the city manager to prepare bid specifications to resurface a section of High Street and reconstruct the west side sidewalk on High Street from the West High Street to South Street. Resolution 2024 have been ready first and second time is open to further amendment. No amendment being offered, the chair will obtain a motion on Resolution 2024. Councillor Witham. Move for its adoption. Councillor Witham moves the adoption of <coughs> Resolution 2024, seconded by Councillor Pepin. <coughs> Discussion. None being so, if you are in favor of the adoption of Resolution 2024, you will state by saying yes. If you are opposed, you will state by saying no. Chair recognizes the clerk to call the roll. Councillor Pepin. Yes. Vincent. Yes. Gibson. Yes. Austin. Yes. Misho. Yes. Witham. Yes. Girding. Yes. Cameron. Yes. Messier. Yes. Resolution 2024 is adopted. Brings us to agenda item number 16, which is new business. Chair recognizes the clerk for a first reading on ordinance number 524. Ordinance number 524, to amend Chapter 4, Personnel Rules and Regulations, Section 6.4, .4, Transfer Between Departments, and Section 7.2, Overtime. November 13, 2023, the City of Summersworth ordains that the ordinances of the City of Summersworth as amended be further amended as follows. Amend Chapter 4 by editing Section 6.4, .4, Transfer Between Departments, and 7.2, Overtime as follows. 6.4, Transfer Between Departments. If an employee possessing the qualifications necessary to fill a vacant <coughs> position in the city wishes to transfer from their current department to another department, they shall be afforded the opportunity to apply and be considered for the position. 7.2 Overtime. Overtime will be paid to employees not exempt from the FLSA at the overtime rate of one and a half times the adjusted base rate of pay for time worked in excess of eight hours per day and of 40 hours per, per week. Overtime within a class will be offered on an equal basis wherever possible. Overtime shall be approved by the appropriate department head in advance unless it is required due to an emergency. At the discretion of the department head, 
compensatory time off may be granted rather than overtime pay. If compensatory time is granted, the maximum balance allowed will be 60 hours. The general foreman will be allowed a balance equal to the current compens compensatory maximum allowed and the AFSCME Council 93 Local Number 863 CBA. If an employee works more than 40 hours in a week, compensatory time off not taken during the same peri pay period accumulates at the rate of one and a half times the time actually worked. Compensatory time off only applies to time to be taken in a pay period after the period when the overtime is worked. The FLSA has detailed rules regarding granting and accumulating compensatory time, which must be fully understood by the employee and department head before being granted. In case of conflict between these rules and the FLSA, the FLSA will be followed. This ordinance shall take effect upon its passage. Sponsored by Councilors Richard Michaud, Matt Girding, Donald Austin, Nancy Cameron, approved city attorney. Ordinance number 524 will remain in first reading until the next regular scheduled meeting. <coughs> Stand recognized to the clerk for a first reading on resolution 2124. Resolution number 2124, to authorize the city manager to convey an easement over city owned property abutting 46 Pinewood Drive to Catherine L. and Melvin W. Burkhart, trustees of the Burkhart Family Revocable Trust, November 13th, 2023. Whereas Catherine and Melvin Burkhart of 46 Pinewood Drive, tax map 32, lot 15, have approached the city requesting an easement over city-owned land located on Pinewood Drive, tax map 46, lot 4, for an existing driveway to access their garage. And whereas the property is currently subject to a power line easement with the Public Service Company of New Hampshire, and they have not raised an objection to this easement request. And whereas said easement will provide access to 46 Pinewood Drive and the grantee shall assume full responsibility for maintenance and repair of the driveway and agree to indemnify and hold the city harmless for any and all liability arising out of the use of the property. Now therefore be it resolved by the City Council of the City of Summersworth that the City Manager is authorized to convey an easement over city owned property abutting 46 Pinewood Drive to Catherine L. and Melvin W. Burkhart, trustees of the Burkhart Family Revocable Trust and to take any additional actions required to convey this easement determined to be in the best interest of the city. Sponsored by Councilors David Witham, Martin Pepin, Richard Michaud, approved city attorney. Resolution 2124 will remain in first reading until the next regular schedule. Uh, Council Witham. Yeah, we're at, this is largely an administrative matter. I'd like to move to suspend council rules and act on it tonight. Council Witham moves that city council rules be so far as suspended as to allow a second reading on resolution 2124 this evening. Seconded by Councilor Seconded by Councilor Austin. Question before the council is on suspension of council rules. All those in favor, please state by saying aye. 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 All those opposed, nope. The ayes appear to no. have it. The ayes appear to have it. The ayes have it, and city council rules are so far as suspended. Chair recognizes the clerk for a second reading on resolution 2124. Resolution number 2124, to authorize the city manager to convey an easement over city-owned property abutting 46 Pinewood Drive to Catherine L. and Melvin W. Burkhart, trustees of the Burkhart Family Revocable Trust. Resolution 2124, having been ready first and second time, is open to further amendment. No amendment being offered, the chair will obtain a motion on Resolution 2124. Council with them. Move for its adoption. Council with them moves the adoption of Resolution 2124, seconded by Councilor Messier. Discussion. Councilor Gibson. I have a problem with this. I don't know who's at fault, who's to blame, or whatever you want to call it. This has been an ongoing situation. It was apparently discussed a number of years ago. Nothing was done about it. We're basically rewarding an encroachment that should have been addressed years ago. And if this was a building on city-owned property, we wouldn't even be considering this easement. I'm, I'm not against the people that are asking for it, per se, but I just question, number one, how it ended up in this situation in the first place, and why the city is assuming liability for basically gross carelessness on the part of the builder, the realtor that sold it, as well as the property owners for not ensuring that the property lines were properly surveyed. You know, that's just me. I 
don't agree with doing stuff like this. It encourages further down the line similar situations being handled the same way. I don't know if we'll run into them again, but it's basically rewarding gross negligence. That's it. Question for the council is on the adoption of resolution 2124. Further discussion? None being so, if you are in favor of the adoption of resolution 2124, you will state by saying yes. If you're opposed, you will state by saying no. Chair recognizes the clerk to call the roll. Councilor Pepin. Yes. Vincent. No. No. Gibson. No. Austin. Yes. Misho. Yes. Witham. Yes. Girding. Yes. Cameron. Yes. Messier. Resolution 2124 is adopted. Oh, Chair recognizes the clerk for a first reading on resolution 2224. Resolution number 2224, to authorize the city manager to contract with Richardson Electric Company, Inc. of Seabrook, New Hampshire for the replacement of two variable frequency drives at the water treatment facility, November 13th, 2023. Whereas the city of Summersworth, Summersworth's capital improvement plan endorsed a project to replace two variable frequency drives, VFDs, for the raw water pumps at the water treatment facility. And whereas the City of Summersworth's approved FY 2024 budget provides funding for the replacement of two VFDs at the water treatment facility. And whereas City staff prepared and accepted requests for bids from qualified contractors for the project and recommends awarding the project to Richard Richardson Electric Company Inc. for an amount of $90,750. And whereas the city council authorizes the city manager to utilize an amount up to $9,250 for project contingency, making the total project not to exceed $100,000. Now, therefore, be it resolved by the city council of the city of Summersworth that the city manager is authorized to contract with Richardson Electric Company, Inc. of Seabrook, New Hampshire, for an amount not to exceed $100,000 for the replacement of two variable frequency drives at the water treatment facility and to take any other action necessary for this project determined to be in the best interest of the city. Sponsored by Councilors David A. Witham, Donald Austin, Matt Girding, Kenneth Vincent, approved city attorney. Resolution 2224 will remain in first reading until the next regular scheduled meeting. Chair recognizes the clerk for a first reading on resolution 2324. Resolution number 2324, to authorize the city manager to convey a telecommunication utility easement to Consolidated Communications of North Northern New England Company, LLC, November 13, 2023. Whereas the Summersworth City Council appro approved an easement with Northern Utilities, Inc. doing business as Unitil on September 7, 2021 for a natural gas transmission line. And whereas Unitil needs a telecommunication line from Consolidated Communications of Northern New England Company, LLC, to support the monitoring and tracking and power needs of the new natural gas transmission line substation at the Turcot pit of Maple Street. And whereas Consolidated Communications of Northern New England Company LLC requires a permanent easement from the city of Ma city off Maple Street in what is commonly referred to as the Turcot pit for the right to lay, install, maintain, replace and remove telephone cable, wire and related fixtures and appurtenances and ground wire line excuse me, and underground lines. Now, therefore, be it resolved by the City Council of the City of Summersworth that the City Manager is authorized to convey a telecommunications utility easement to Consolidated Communications of New England Company, LLC, on city-owned property commonly known as the Turcot Pit off Maple Street, and to take any additional actions required to convey this easement determined to be in the best interest of the city. Sponsored by Councillor David A. Witham, approved City Attorney. Your Honor. Council Witham. I'd like to move to suspend council rules to act on this this evening for the request of the city manager. Council Witham moves that city council rules be so far as suspended as to allow a second reading on resolution 2324 this evening, seconded by Councilor Messier. The question before the council is on suspension of council rules. All those in favor, please state by saying aye. 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 All those opposed, no. The ayes appear no. To have it. The ayes appear to have it. And <coughs> city council rules are so far as suspended. Chair recognizes the clerk for a second reading on resolution 2324. Resolution number 2324, to authorize the city manager to convey a telecommunication utility easement to Consolidated Communications of Northern New England Company, LLC. Resolution 2324, I've been ready first and second time, is open to further amendment. No amendment be it offered, the chair will... Sorry, I'm going to... 
but wait till I get it out of my mouth first. <laughs> no amendment being offered the chair will obtain a motion on resolution 2324. Councilor Witham. I'll move for its adoption. Councilor Witham moves the adoption of resolution 2324, seconded by Councilor Pepin. Discussion. None being right. so. None being so, if you're going, it's Mr. Manager. <laughs> Never mind. <laughs> No, I just wanted to point out the reason why I was asking it to be waived. You did approve waiving the moratorium to do the work already. Uh, they need this easement to do the work. Uh, it also goes hand in glove with Unitil's new substation at the Turquoise Pit. They need the telecommunica telecommunication lines to get in there. So it just makes sense if, to bundle this all together and get it approved tonight so they can continue to start working on it uh, and finishing up and button up that project for Unitil. Thank you, Your Honor. Thank you, Mr. Manager. And it was, a, excuse me, Your Honor, and it was approved by city. It took a little doing, but between communicating with their attorney and our attorney, we got to a resolution on the uh, uh, the easement being approved by city attorney. Thank you. Question over the council is on the adoption of resolution 2324. Further discussion? <coughs> None being so. If you are in favor of the adoption of resolution 2324, you will state by saying yes. If you're opposed, you will state by saying no. Chair recognizes the clerk to call the roll. Councilor Pepin. Yes. Vincent. Yes. Gibson. Yes. Austin? Yes. Misho? Yes. Witham? Yes. Girding? Yes. Cameron? Yes. Messier? Yes. Resolution 2324 is adopted. Vote under other, other A, vote to certify the, 23, the 2023 municipal election results. The vote will be on certification of the, resu the results. <coughs> Discussion? I hope none, because again, this is the electorate results, and we're not, not going to get in the trend of what might have been happening in other places. No. <laughs> All those in favor of certification, please state by saying aye. 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 All those opposed, no. The ayes appear to have it. The ayes have it, and the results are certified. Brings us to agenda item under under 17, or agenda item 17, which is comments by visitors. Any closing comment? Or any closing comments by visitors? Please come forward. Boy, this guy's just about done tonight here. Please come forward. State your name, your address, and the ward you live in, if you have that applicable information. Good evening again. Laura Berry, Ward uh, 4, uh, 211 Green Street. So sorry, brain <laughs> blocks all of a sudden. <laughs> it's going around. Um, I just wanted to share some information that while I was out at the polls on our November 7th polling date that I thought all counselors should be aware of, um, multiple residents had a hard time finding information for our city. So I just want to make sure that we as a city are making that as easy as possible for our um, the residents. They don't always know where to go, when it's posted, how often it's posted. So I would actually um, maybe suggest a workshop or uh, an informational session about where they can find these things, how often are they put up, how far in advance. I think the residents would benefit from this because that was something I kept hearing over and over and over from our residents. So I just wanted to bring that forward for those who are sitting on council now and also will continue to do so. So thank you. Thank you. Any further closing comments by visitors? Any further closing comments by visitors? Any further closing comments by visitors? None being so brings us to agenda item number 18, which is closing comments by council members. We'll start with Ward 1 Councilor, Councilor Pepin. Uh, the only thing I got tonight is I'd like to thank all the people that come out and vote. Um, it's, I, I stood out here in front of City Hall and you get to meet a lot of nice people, especially the people that came, even the people that campaigning against you. Uh, so you had some real good conversation. So it was very, very nice uh, uh, to be out there and to meet the people that came in to vote. So that's all I got. Thank you. Thank you, Councilor. Ward 2 Council, Councilor Vincent. Thank you, Your Honor. I first of all want to apologize for being late. At the age of 59 now, I used to run at 100 miles an hour, but now I only run at about 98, so I need naps. <laughs> I fell asleep. Sorry. Anyway, uh, I'd like to thank everybody that uh, that supported me in the, in the, in the selection. I'm um, hoping to, you know, uh, take uh, good care of the voice of the city. Thank you. Thank you, Councilor. Ward 3 Councilor, Councilor Gibson. First off, I'd like to... Uh, say thank you to all the veterans here in the city for the service they gave to our country and the sacrifices that they made as well as their families doing that. Um, I don't think the way this country treats its veterans is right and they should have the services and be taken care of properly after they've served. And that's just not happening in this country. 
when you have to have independent organizations picking up the slack for the government, it's a sad statement on the way we view our veterans. Elections. Thank you for everybody that voted for me. Um, it was a tough election. Nobody put up a hell of a fight. Okay, bad joke. Um, but thank you to all those who ran and won. Thank you to all those who ran and lost. It, when people make the effort to become part of the system, it means that people are doing their best to make sure that the system works right. Um, I hope people understand my position on the, the easement. As I said, I'm not trying to punish the people who brought this forward or anything like that. It's that um, negligence on too many parties' part that this occurred. And I just have a hard time accepting that we reward that negligence across the board. And finally, before I forgot to do it the last time around, but I wanted to thank the school board and the superintendent for their kind words to us after we approved the full amount of the educational sufficiency money that came back to the city. I really appreciated being thanked for doing what we did, especially when it seemed that a lot of people had gotten the wrong idea about what was going on with us, that somehow we were planning a money grab. So thank you once again. Thank you, Councillor. Ward 4, Councillor. Councillor Austin. Thank you, Your Honor. <clears throat> Uh, let me start off by a couple of, with a couple of observations here. Um, I, I too spoke with a number of constituents who came to the polls on November 7th, and that, that's always an interesting day for me to sit out there at the poll and talk to people who sometimes you don't see, except for that two-year period where they come and vote, right? But, um, I had actually had several people talk to me about the crosswalks on Stackpole Road. Uh, we have signs near them, but in one location down near the Sunningdale um, development, the signs now are almost entirely covered by trees, and so you can't see the signs. And it's very easy to not to miss the crosswalks over there. And so, you know, people are suggesting maybe we need a crosswalk sign that has flashing lights on it so people recognize that there's something that they should be looking for. I don't know what the answer is. I can tell you that the crosswalks even in front of the school, many people don't pay attention to. Uh, traffic is, is very fast and on certain times of the day very heavy in there. Sounds like the time of day is actually coincides with when school goes in, school goes out, which is the most dangerous time for those kids there. So, uh, But I can tell you as, as a resident of that neighborhood, if you try to cross Stackpole Road, uh, when you walk your dog or whatever like that. It is very difficult uh, to anticipate whether somebody's going to stop for the crosswalk or not. So uh, that's an area that, you know, hopefully somebody can take a look at and maybe improve the signage or, or whatever, but make those crosswalks more visible to drivers because sometimes it's, it's really very easy to miss those crosswalks. Uh, the dog park. Um, there's actually been several people who told me now, and I haven't been there lately, but uh, near the gates, uh, the dogs have actually dug under the gates now, and it's getting pretty dangerous where they can actually get out of the park fencing and go out into the parking lot and out into the street. So I don't know whether it's something that can be repaired before the park closes for the season or whether that will wait till next spring. Uh, but that's something we need to take a look at is those places where the dogs are digging under the fences there. Um, I'm looking forward to the next Economic Development Committee meeting with the HDC. I think that'll be a very good opportunity to begin that healthy discussion on, on that um, resolution or ordinance. I'm not sure which it is. Ordinance uh, that Council Witham has sponsored. Uh, I agree. I mean, the conversation needs to be had. 
even if the final decision is nothing changes at least it will be based on conversations that are current and uh, with informed consent and all of that so I'm looking forward to that the election results um, I do appreciate everybody who came out and voted obviously I would have result like the results to be different than they were in Ward 4 but nonetheless congratulations to the winners there my only comment is, and I have spoken to this, I think every time we've had a, a local election in my 16 years of serving between the school board and the city council, local elections are the probably the most important election you can participate in. Because it's your closest to those elected officials and can be held accountable. The election of elected, elected officials can be held accountable. So we had in this city 22% of registered voters come out to vote. Well, that means 78% didn't. We did a little bit better than that in Ward 4. It was about 27% of registered voters, but that's still 73% who didn't. So a very small minority of people are deciding who are the elected officials in this city, and there's something wrong with that. I'm sorry. Uh, in the past, we've looked at, you know, for a local election where there's no state, no federal, no questions being asked, uh, if you achieve over 20% uh, turnout rate, we view that as being pretty good. It still means a small minority of people are making decisions for everybody in the city. So once again, I will say local elections are critically important and um, we'll be watching all of those elected officials that won this time around and we will have a chance to revisit again in two years. Thank you. Thank you, Councillor. Ward 5, Councillor. Councillor Michu. Uh, thank you, Honor. Uh, first and foremost, I'd like to thank the veterans. For the most part, they're what they do. It's because of them we're sitting here being able to do what we do here. I also want to thank for the voters for coming out, the poll workers for their long, I would say 12 hours, but legally 12 hours, but yet an hour before they have to set up and now counting all the way. So a good 14, 15 hours for those people. So it's a long day. So I like to thank them also. I also want to mention that after the last election, we brought it up and my bad, I forgot also that we have a problem in front of Ward 5 polling place, people speeding down Main Street, cars not slowing down. And we did discuss about possibly putting a crosswalk there, but it wasn't feasible. So I hope next time I probably talk with the city manager that maybe put some kind of some barrier or something in the road, letting people know to slow down before they get to the polling place. Because I don't know how many times across the street people park and they try to come across to the polling ward and people are just flying down. The people basically have to jump out of the way because the cars are flying. So I'll do my best and try to remember. So next, either January or February is our next uh, voting. So I'd like to have some kind of something in the road to slow these people down. Also, I'd like to uh, congratulate the Summersworth football team during the trifecta. First time in several years that we actually won the football state championship three, th three years in a row. So congratulate the, to them. Thank you, Anna. Thank you, Councillor. Moving to the at-large side, at-large Councillor. Councillor Witham. Thank you. Uh, Councillor Austin, I would agree. 22% uh, is a low number. But to your point, I bet you if we were to plot a line over the last 10 election cycles or more, it's going to be a flat line, pretty darn consistent. And this actually might have tweaked it up a little bit. It's actually, 22 is actually maybe a little bit high compared to normal. So it's not good, but it's, you know, I guess it's a relative term. Um, I like your comment about the crosswalks. Yeah, if we could fix the signage, that's good. Uh, I do like the rectangular rapid flash beacons like we've installed at a few locations around uh, the city. However, uh, my public service announcement for the evening is uh, don't believe that a car will stop for this. Uh, case in point, uh, last Thursday, uh, the, the day of the little bit of snow that we had, uh, I was traveling on High Street approaching uh, Memorial Drive where we've done all of those improvements and we have those rectangular rapid flash beacons. It was later in the afternoon, it was dusky, uh, and a uh, student uh, obviously had stayed after school or for practice or whatever, had walked up singularly to the, uh, to the button. He had pressed the button, 
the light started to flash, he took a step and the car in front of me had no intention on stopping and was going quite fast. It actually caused me to go, you know, to, to grab my breath because I thought it was going to be a bad day. It wasn't. So the message, and I'm reminded of this because my son one time we were touring UNH and he stepped out into the crosswalk and I grabbed him by the, the jacket and said, whoa, whoa, that car wasn't stopping. But they're supposed to stop for cars in the crosswalk, Dad. I'm like, you're correct. He says, we would have been right. I said, we would have been dead right. So uh, you got to pay attention even with all of the, the technology. Uh, I know police is out there doing the best they can, but uh, it's just a, a difficult situation. Uh, to the point that was made by uh, residents here tonight, both the, the front and back end about information, I, I've thought about that. I actually pulled up the, the city website uh, agendas and the ordinances and all of that is available on the city website. Uh, you could get it from the city clerk's office. You could call a council member. You can call the city manager. Um, I guess there's a variety of ways. If there's other ways, that, that would be good to utilize as well. I don't know what those would be. I'm not sure if a workshop's necessary, but maybe something government operations could kick around, given that it's been brought up more than once here as to is our communication uh, adequate, uh, at least deserves a discussion at a committee level, I think. So uh, my last remark, uh, back over the summer, we had the new school zone warning, warning signs installed, uh, Council of Vincent's initiative on uh, Maple Street and High Street. Uh, curious when SUR is going to finish up that work. Uh, they have uh, the, the utility poles that the old signs were on are still in place on Maple Street. I know Councillor Messier has mentioned this a few times. So um, enough problems with more utility poles in the city than we need. We don't need to have leftover ones there. So not sure. I would assume that was part of the SUR contract to remove those. And then on High Street uh, by the little takeout restaurant, uh, the one that was removed there has left a large hole in the ground that still is open. Uh, you're not likely to step in it, it's in an odd place, but it probably should be filled with concrete or something. So th that, that job just needs to be finished up. And then SUR Construction did the uh, repair of the catch basin at Blackwater Road and High Street. Um, uh, all of their traffic control signs are still out on Indigo Hill Road, though that work's been wrapped up for two or three weeks now. So before they get buried in snow, maybe we can have SUR come back to pick those up. So SUR has got some tidying up to do. Thanks. Thank you, Councillor. At large, Councillor. Councillor Girding. Thank you, Your Honor. Um, I wasn't able to make the um, Recreation Committee meeting where they toured Ash Street Park, but I did go and uh, check it out myself. The work looks so great. Uh, thank you to city staff and to Home Depot for making that happen. Thank you for uh, to the Recreation Committee for also uh, helping push that forward. Um, really excited to see how that park comes along in the spring when we can get some plants in there. I'm sure it will look really pretty. Um, I also want to do a shout out for the Summersworth football team. Congratulations on the win. That's pretty exciting. I was there at the game. It was a nail biter until about the fourth quarter when they took it took it away and uh, won it. Um, but really, really uh, exciting game. Uh, well played. Um, congrats to all the seniors on the team who I'm sure are still even today celebrating. Um, and congrats to the whole team. Uh, and lastly, just again, wanted to uh, thank all the voters on election day, all the poll workers. Again, it's a long day. I've, I work the polls uh, anytime that I'm um, not on the ballot. Um, and I just know that it is exhausting and tiring and, um, but also really fulfilling. So thank you to all of them. Um, thank you to everybody here who, um, ran for office, uh, whether in, you know, here tonight or not, um, that in and of itself is exhausting and it's hard to put yourself out there. Um, especially, you know, uh, whether win or lose, you know, it's, it's a lot of work. Um, so thank you to everybody. Um, and also, I just want to say thank you to Mayor Hilliard for being willing to uh, work with me uh, in the transition period. I'm really excited to get to work. I'll learn, hopefully, all your tricks of the trade because you've been a phenomenal mayor, and I hope I can um, take away a lot from our time over the next couple months. So thank you. Thank you, Councillor. At-large, Councillor. Councillor Cameron. 
Thank you, Anna. Um, I would, too, like to thank everybody who came out and voted. Um, thank you for voting me back in again. But to those who also ran, I mean, as Councilor Gurdon said, it takes a lot to put yourself out there. So my advice would be don't give up because there's always a spot, um, and I appreciate that. I'd also like to um, give a shout-out to the new footpaths out at Willem Pond. They're amazing. So if you haven't been out there, get out there and check it out. And thank you, Council Austin, for um, about the holes at the dog park, because I was over there, and I had forgotten to talk about that. So I appreciate that, and they are quite... You could tell somebody could, not my fat dog, but some other dogs who get under there. So thank you for that. Um, and Thanksgiving will have come and gone. The parade will have come and gone before we meet again. So happy Thanksgiving, everybody. I hope you have a happy and safe one. And I hope to see you all at the parade. Thank you. Thank you, Counselor. At-large Counselor, Counselor Messier. Thank you, Chair. Uh, again, thank you, uh, all the people that voted and the ones that voted for me, I thank you. A um, couple of minor things. I don't know if they were taken down today, but the American flags on High Street, some of those need to be taken down. We have one flag hanging by a string. We have another one that the residents picked up and put on their front step. So if we could get out there and take care of that. And the issue of the crosswalk. That's not unique to Somersworth. I was at a restaurant in Rochester and somebody walked out and I'm on their main drag and almost got hit. I go to a pizza shop down here at night and I know you wait because nobody stops. Um, the light issue, my cousin is the crosswalk guard at Memorial Drive. Even prior to the lights, she almost got hit. So it's an issue of slowing down, I guess. Um, so I don't, I don't, there's no easy answer for that. People just need to slow down, but I don't know. Uh, and I'd like to congratulate the football team for winning their third title and also the girls' volleyball team for making the finals. Um, Obvious, I'm not saying they're winners, but I'm not going to say they're losers. They made it, mm -hmm. and and I still want to give them a shout-out. And uh, that's it. Thank you. Thank, thank you, Counselor. Brings us to agenda item number 19. Yes, there actually is an agenda number 19. I have never utilized it in the 10 years that I've sat here as mayor, but we will utilize it here this evening. It's a future agenda items. Um, as you know, we had a non-public last week. Um, we do have someone to bring forward uh, for a proposal for the National Guard Center that will require drafting a resolution and having a first reading so that it could be debated and placed on the agenda for a second reading for the December meeting. I am therefore uh, requesting that we schedule a special meeting simply for a first reading. So follow me. The first reading means we will open the meeting, have the Pledge of Allegiance, um, the, the obvious um, statement of acknowledging our Native American uh, ancestral lands, uh, have comments by visitors, and then have the resolution read for a first time. That is it. And then adjourn. There is no discussion. There is no debate. So I would like to schedule that for Monday at 4 p.m., which means I need five of you to show up at 4 p.m. Can I get a commitment that five of us can be here because that will then be a quorum. Again, there is no discussion, no action taking place. I just need five bodies in the seat so that this body is a f legally meeting. Do we have a commitment that- Is this the 20th? This is the 20th. Show of hands. Yes. Show of hands that I can get five here. Wow, better than five, great. Awesome, thank you. So that will be Monday. We will schedule that for 4 p.m. at Monday. Again, it will be five minutes tops. It is simply procedural. That will then move that forward uh, to our December 11th meeting for a second reading, which will then uh, bring, that to, bring that to debate on whether or not the council wishes to accept that or not. Chair recognizes Councillor Witham uh, for a motion to go into non-public. Yes, Your Honor, I'd like to move that we go into non-public session in accordance with New Hampshire RC 91A regarding a personnel matter. 
Council Wynnum moves that this council moves into non-public, seconded by Councillor Vincent. Non-public requires a uh, roll call vote. Chair recognizes the clerk uh, to call the roll. Councillor Pepin. Yes. Vincent. Yes. Gibson. Yes. Austin. Yes. Misho. Yes. Witham. Yes. Girding. Yes. Cameron. Yes. Messier. Yes. City Council will uh, take a five-minute break and move into non-public. <laughs> 